Welcome to my How Does It Work series, today's oxygen not included topic, avoiding overload damage on power lines. Overload damage occurs when your wire is incapable of handling the power demanded by the power consumers it is connected to. When you mouse over or click on a wire you can see how much power it can handle before overloading, how much your power consumers are currently demanding, and how much power would be demanded if all your power consumers were on at the same time. You can put as many power consumers as you want on a wire without it breaking. It will only break when the power demanded is above what your wire is capable of handling. Regular wire can handle up to 1 kilowatt, conductive wire can handle up to 2 kilowatts, and both types of heavy wire can handle up to 20 kilowatts. Dupes will automatically repair broken wire with the metal it was built out of. However, this is treating the symptom and whatever caused the wire to break will continue to cause wires to break. Wires can break anywhere along them. The break location doesn't appear to follow any set pattern. It is important to note how the heavy wire didn't break, even though it's part of the same circuit, because the heavy watt wire is capable of handling the power demanded while the regular wire isn't. For this example, we have full batteries on the left and we'll use the transformers in the middle to pass the charge to the right batteries. Then the automation will trip and pass the charge back to the left battery. It is important to note that buildings count as consumers and the high side of transformers count as consumers too. Now transformers don't actually eat power, they just pass it on, but the game models them like a consumer for the high side and like a battery for the low side. In fact, they actually have a small battery on board the same size as their consumption. The small transformer can consume up to 1 kilowatt and the large transformer can consume up to 4 kilowatts. Keep in mind this consumption due to transformers will not be shown when mousing over the wire like I showed earlier. Also note how each transformer adds its own individual consumption, so you'll need to keep an eye on how many transformers you have on each line. This means regular wire can support one small transformer, conductive wire can support two small transformers, and the heavy wire can support five large transformers. One thing that trips up new players is what actually counts as being on the same circuit. In this example, the conductive wire is hooked to the high side of the transformers, and the regular wire is hooked to the low side of the transformers. You can see how the two aren't on the same circuit and how all of the regular wire is on the same circuit. This is because the low side of a transformer is the only way to separate out a circuit. This doesn't mean we can't have more than one low side of a transformer per circuit though. If the wires are connected, they will be part of the same circuit. Also note that running another wire off of the same low side of the transformer still counts for that circuit. Generators and batteries do not count as consumers and therefore can't break wires. However, if an object doesn't have enough power, it can't actually overload a wire. Batteries, transformers, and extra generators give a bigger pool of power to take from and will enable a wire to break instead of simply running out of power. Stay tuned for a future video discussing how you can use these non-overloading mechanics to your advantage. But for now, if you like this video, please hit the like button and get subscribed, leave a comment down below with other topics you'd like to see covered, and if you see me on Reddit, say hello!